Hello, and welcome to today's workshop, Resume Rescue, designed for school to careers at Herkimer BOCES. My name is Alyssa Steele. I'm a former career advising peer at Hartwick College, which means that when I was a college student, I supported my peers in the development of their application materials. I'm the owner of Resume Royalty, which is an application document writing service. And in addition, I'm a contract resume writer for a company called Talent Inc. My goal today is to provide you with the resources that you need to confidently submit your resume. We can talk about other application materials at a later date and time, um, but really what I'm hopeful that you get out of this is an idea of how to create a resume that is engaging, that provides all the content that your potential future employers need to determine if they'd like to hire you, and then to provide you with the skills to be able to craft your own resume. So I always like to start with a list, uh, the ten, top 10 employability skills as defined by Forbes. So when employers are inter, um, surveyed each year, they identify these are the things that I'm looking for in a future employee. And these are the things that your resume needs to demonstrate you have the ability to do. Number one is to work in a team. Number two is to make decisions and solve problems. Three, to plan, organize, and prioritize work. Four, to communicate verbally with people inside and outside of your organization. So external partners and internal partners. Number five, the ability to obtain and process information. The ability to analyze quantitative data. Technical knowledge related to the job. And then proficiency with computer software programs. You can see that the top of the list really focuses in on those soft skills, things that you can't necessarily teach or train, but the technical knowledge, the computer software programs toward the bottom of the list, those are things that you can teach and train. So that leads me to this place, what is a resume? A resume is a brief account of a person's education, qualifications, and experience, typically sent with a job application. It's really just a general summary of who you are as a professional. A resume is really not your opportunity to highlight your personal experiences or attributes. Um, there can be a healthy marriage between both, but really what you're trying to do is look at a job description or an internship description, and you're going to write your resume to that description. Here's how I meet those qualifications. The best advice I ever received when I was a college student was to keep a master resume. What that means is that every time I had a new experience, and I still do this, and I've had this document for over 10 years, <clears throat> What I do is I go into the document and I update if I received an award or if I have a new job or if I completed a new training. So for example, my master resume now includes a training that I completed several years ago um, as a safe zone train the trainer. So I'm a certified safe zone educator. Um, it includes an award I received last fall from the State University of New York Chief Student Affairs Officers Group. Those are things that you'll think you'll remember them, but you don't always remember them. And when you're writing that resume to that job description, sometimes your current experience might not necessarily be the most appropriate or most applicable experience. So you want to be able to, <clears throat> excuse me, you want to be able to reference those prior experiences and help refresh your memory. So what it, a resume is doing is it's helping an employer decide if they want to interview you or not. It's your foot in the door. So here are a couple of resumes, and I'm wondering, you know, as you're taking a look at them, would you interview them or would you not interview them? The average hiring manager takes five to, second seconds, five to seven seconds to review your resume. During that time, they're trying to, determine, trying to determine your name, 
your current title and company and your start and end dates, your prior work history, and your education. 76% of resumes are discarded because of an unprofessional email address. I will use the example of an email address that I had when I was in high school, blondebellaxo18 at aim.com. And I'm sure that none of you know what AIM is, but it was AOL Instant Messenger, and that was my AIM screen name, and it came with an email as well. When I got into my junior and senior years, I started to apply um, apply to colleges. I changed my email address. I got a free Gmail email address and it was uh, lissabnapolitano at gmail.com. A little bit more professional. I currently use abnsteel at gmail.com, which now includes my married name. What I didn't have in high school was an email address. And I know many of you have email addresses through your high school accounts. You may elect to create a personal Gmail so that way you can keep your school information and your job internship application information um, separate. That way when you're transitioning out of high school, you have it stored somewhere else. <clears throat> There's only 200 seconds between when a job is posted and the receipt of the first resume. That's really not a lot of time. We're talking less than a couple of minutes where an, an employee, a potential employee, an applicant is already submitting their job application. And on average, there's 250 resumes received for one job posting. So what does that mean? It means that your content needs to stand out. Your resume needs to stand out. And how does it stand out? You can be creative in the way that you put together your resume, and I'll show you some examples in a few minutes. But really, it's about the layout. It's about the readability. It's about being able to quickly glean in that five to seven second window. Does this person have experience at companies similar to mine or in jobs similar to mine? Here are some mistakes that disqualify you very quickly from a job search. Typos lies. So saying that you were, um, you know, with a company for an extended period of time and you really weren't or changing your title to better fit, um, better fit the job description. There's an asterisk on that. So I uh, supervise orientation leaders, but at SUNY Oswego, where I work, we call them Laker leaders. An orientation leader is a returning student mentor and guide for new students. Um, so when they do their resumes, because Laker Leader isn't really, is a colloquial term and, and very much tied to our campus, I have them write that they were an orientation leader. It's a little bit more universally accepted. Uh, when I, my first job out of grad school was as the innovative, or student and research partners, innovative programs and activities coordinator. That really only, that meant that I was the student activities coordinator. It's a little bit more of a widely accepted term. So on my resume, I just list that I was the student activities coordinator. The other thing that happens often and more, more often in the cover letter is the wrong addressee. Please make sure that you are submitting the letter to the person you intend to be submitting the letter to. So I'm curious, is your resume ready? What I'd like you to do is first think, use the resume rescue, the rewrite your resume document that's included with this workshop to jot down your notes, write down notes on your own resume. Um, and if you don't have one, that's okay. Use that rewrite your resume document to help you populate the information you need. With a friend virtually, share your resumes with one another and provide feedback to each other. Is the format clear? Can a hiring manager immediately see the most pertinent information? Are the verbs catchy and do they elicit a strong action? And we'll go over some action verbs in a minute here. Are the categories related to the job description and would you hire this person? And then I'm curious, share out loud with that person after you're in your pair, what are the positive highlights of your current resume and what might you edit? And what would you consider including in the future? 
So what I'd like to show you is a list of action verbs for resumes and professional profiles. This document is also included in your Google Classroom. <clears throat> and what it does is it breaks down the skills that you have. So your management and leadership skills can use this whole list of action verbs. The whole point of using an action verb, instead of saying something like, I worked the cash register, you would say something instead like, I managed cash transactions up to $500 per day. Your research skills. Let's say that you're researching um, with a, a teacher at your, at your home, home district, your home school, and you are trying to determine the, um, the percentage of students in the National Honor Society who are um, completing community service hours above and beyond the minimum requirement. So you might say, I evaluated the community service experience of 25 National Honor Society members and authored a report for the Honor Society advisor. You can be a little bit more specific when you use those action verbs. And again, it elicits a strong action. I evaluated, I discussed, I edited. Let's say you're, the, you're in the yearbook, you're in your book club, um, and you, you have an entire section that you edit on your own. I edited X, Y, and Z section um, that included 26 pages of color content. Do you see kind of where we're getting at with the strong action verbs? This is the document I referred to a few minutes ago, Rewrite Your Resume, again, included in the content. But what we're really helping you to try to get at with this is what are the things that I need to include in my resume? And if you don't know what those things are, that's okay. This is helping you guide through that. So here's your contact information, your education. If you have gone to BOCES or you're currently a BOCES student, your education at BOCES, it will be important to include that as well. Any awards and honors you've received, your co-curricular activities. So things like athletics, things like um, Friends of Rachel or Skills USA, those clubs and organizations. And then your employment experience. Many of you are juggling, uh, juggling outside employment in addition to school, whether that be at a restaurant or um, at a local store or even as a babysitter. That's considered employment experience as well. What I'd like you to do is think about what those duties are and then how can you write them so they elicit, again, that strong action using those action verbs I shared with you a few minutes ago. Now, all of you are in some type of internship. So this is where you're going to want to include your internship experience and again, list your duties. Of course, in this environment, a lot of your duties are virtual or you're experiencing mentor, some type of mentorship. So know that that's okay. And you can indicate that maybe you, um, Facilitate weekly meetings with your mentor to review topics, including X, Y, and Z. If you are actually going on site, that's fantastic. Let's list some of those duties right out. Making sure in your resume that your fonts are legible, your formatting is uniform. So if something is size five in one area, make it size five in every area. And then use basic fonts like Arial, Cambria, or Times New Roman. You can use a serif font, which is a font that has the small lines at the bottom, like Times New Roman or a sans serif font. Both are completely acceptable.